Well, hello and welcome back. Let's take a moment of silence here for our last video. Well, tonight I have several different topics for you, a bunch of little mixed review, things that I think we've been pretty weak on. Um, so we want to make sure we focus on these before our big day. All right, question one. So we have the integral from 3 to 4 of x cubed minus 5x squared plus 8x plus 4 over x minus 1. Okay, now, things to remember. You can only split if there's one term on the bottom. Clearly, there are two terms, so splitting's not an option. Obviously, I'm going to try u sub first. If I let u equal x minus 1, then my du is equal to dx. So basically, I'm going to get all this junk over u. Clearly, that doesn't work because you can't have two variables. That would be the point of u sub, is that everybody's the letter u. So what the heck do you do? Well, this is one that hasn't popped up too much, and we really haven't seen it since the practice exam. But when the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the denominator, we have to slow down and do long division. Okay, so again, new topic we want to make sure we're ready for. So I'm going to do x minus 1 divided by x cubed minus 5x squared plus 8x plus 4. Okay, so long division. I'm matching up first term to first term. What do I multiply x by to get x cubed? Obviously x squared. So I'm going to say that's x cubed minus x squared. I'm going to subtract. I'm going to go and change my signs. That becomes a negative. That becomes a positive. Those cancel. That gets me negative 4x squared plus 8x. Match first term to first term. I'm going to have to multiply by a negative 4 and an x. So negative 4x. Take that, distribute it through. So negative 4x squared plus 4x. Negative 4x squared plus 4x. Okay, go through, change your signs. Make this a positive and this a negative. Those cancel. 8x minus 4x gets me 4x. Bring down my plus 4. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say I'm going to match them up by multiplying by a positive 4. So I'm going to get 4x minus 4. Go through and change my signs. This becomes a negative. This becomes a positive. So it looks like I get a remainder of 8. Now let me remind you, I haven't done any calculus yet. Okay, now I have to slow down and rewrite this equation. So I get an answer of x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 8 over x minus 1. Okay, so I just want to be clear on where that came from. This was what I got when I divided, so that's what I start with. Because I got a positive 8, I'm putting a plus 8 over the x minus 1 that I was dividing by. Now again, I haven't done any calculus. Now I have to integrate this. So I'll slap a dx on the end. I am going to split. So I'm going to integrate x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus, because that's a plus here, the integral of 8 over x minus 1. Now I don't recall the bounds, so I'm going to have to scroll up. Uh, 3 to 4. Okay, so 3 to 4, 3 to 4. So this one side looks pretty straightforward. I'm going to get x cubed over 3 minus 4x squared over 2 plus 4x from 3 to 4. On this uh, equation here, again, I have to try u sub, of course, first. u equals x minus 1, du equals dx. So let's see, that's going to be 8. I can pull out the integral of du over u and a plus sign between those two. So let's see, if I integrate this, I'm going to get plus 8 times, this is going to be the ln of u, and my u is really x minus 1. And again, I need to plug in the bounds 3 and 4. All right, so I'm going to plug in my 4 first. 4 cubed is 64 thirds minus, this is really 2. So 4 squared is 16 times 2 is minus 32 plus 16, there's my upper, minus my lower. So that's 27 thirds, which of course is 9. Minus 3 squared is 9 times 2 is minus 18 plus 12. Okay, and obviously you can add that together. And then I'm here, I'm going to get, um, I'm just going to, well, I'll just go off to the side here. Plus 
8, and I'm going to bracket in now. I'm going to pull the 8 out, and I'm going to say it's the ln of 4 minus 1, so the ln of 3 minus the ln of 2. Now, I'm assuming you can add these numbers together, so my focus isn't on that. My focus is more on this piece here. Remember, this exam loves log properties. So remember, logs are really just exponents. When I see a minus between logs, so I think when do I subtract an exponent is really when I'm dividing. So this piece here can clean up to 8 ln of 3 over 2. And then obviously whatever you get for this section, I'm not going to work all that out. But we have not done long division in a while. All right, we've seen a ton of trig equations recently, and we have to be good at solving these. Okay, so let me give you an example here. We have to solve 3 sine x over 2 equals 3. All right, so let's just review solving a basic trig equation. The first thing I want to do is isolate the trig equation, or the trig piece. So I'm going to right off the bat divide both sides by 3. So I'm going to get the sine of x over 2 equals 1. Now, I don't know when the sine of x over 2 equals 1 necessarily. I only know the, the boring old sine function, sine of x, and I know cosine of x. I don't know cosine of 5x, cosine of 10x. I know the very simple ones. So what we do is a u sub, but we don't do the du part. We just pick a u. So my u is x over 2. So I'm really solving when does the sine of u equal 1. And again, that's an easy equation, because all I'm doing is picturing the sine curve. And the sine curve hits 1, of course, label your tick marks, at pi over 2. So the u is equal to pi over 2. And then what do you do? You substitute the u back in. So I'm going to get x over 2 equals pi over 2. Multiply both sides by 2. I'm going to get x equals pi. All right, let's try another one. 3 tangent of 7x over 3 equals radical 3. Again, looks intimidating, but we all know how to solve a basic trig equation. Get the trig piece by itself. So I'm going to say tangent of 7x over 3 equals radical 3 over 3. Again, I know regular sine, cosine, and tan of x. I don't know it of anything else inside here, so my goal is to do a quick u sub. u equals 7x over 3. So the question is, when does the tangent of u equal radical 3 over 3? Now this time I'm not looking at the graph. I'm, I'm racking my brain of the trig values. The tangent of who is radical 3 over 3. The tangent of who has all the 3s? Well, we know that's the tangent of 30. So 30 degrees, of course, is pi over 6. Now i got to think quadrants. When I think trig, I'm going two quadrants. All students tip cows positive because this is a positive radical 3 over 3 in the first and it's positive in the third. So I need to say my u is going to equal pi over 6 in the first quadrant and again that's 30 degrees in the fourth so that's 180 plus 30 is 210 and if I divide that by 30 that's 7 so I'm going to get my u equals 7 pi over 6. Okay now again I used u because this is an easy equation. I need to go back and plug in the u value. 7x over 3 equals pi over 6. And 7x over 3 equals 7 pi over 6. Carefully solve each equation. I'm just going to cross multiply. Uh, so I'm going to get 3 pi equals 42x. So x equals 3 pi over 42. Again, I'm going to cross multiply. 21 pi equals 42x, 21 pi over 42 equals x. And obviously, if you can reduce those numbers, go for it. But we should be able to solve a trig equation very handily. Okay, a Riemann sum. We're fantastic at these when it's tabular, uh, but not the best at them when they give us a function. So, here's one method. Make a table of values and make it tabular. What an idea. So I'm going to call this x, and I'm going to call this f of x equals 4 to the x. Look how simple this is. Make your own table. You need four subintervals from 0 to 2. Well, what are you going to count by if you're going to have four subintervals? Obviously, I'm going to take my a minus b, so that's 2, and divide it by 4. So I have to count by 1 half. So I'm going to have 0, 1 half, 1, and 2. There are four intervals from 0 to 2. 
And I'm just going to evaluate all of them. What is 4 to the 0? 1, of course. What's 4 to the 1 half? Well, that freaked people out. Remember, 1 half is really just the square root. The square root of 4 is 2. 4 to the 1st is 4, and 4 squared is 16. Now, how simple is this? You made a table, and now you do your right ream on sum. Your base, height on the right. Base, height on the right. Base, height on the right. Okay, so I'm not going to work out all the math. We're pretty good at the tabular ream on sums. But again, if they don't give you a table, make a table. Not that bad. Okay, our other brand new topic was the limit definition of the Riemann sum. Again, we haven't seen this since our practice exam. Um, so, there's your definition, things you have to remember to find. Change in x, which is right here, b minus a over n, get it written down. You need x sub k, which is equal to a plus k times delta x. And then, of course, you have to evaluate f of x sub k. And then, make sure you know your formula. So we're going to go through one quick example, and uh, just to kind of review here real quickly. Okay, so here's my example. I need to integrate from 2 to 5 of 8x minus x squared dx, and I needed to express it as the definition of a limit. So again, I, my first goal is to find delta x, b minus a over n. 5 minus 2 over n gets me 3 over n. Then I need to find um, x sub k. You have to just remember x sub k is equal to a plus k times delta x. So my a value is my number 2 plus k times delta x, which is 3 over n. Then you need to find f of x sub k. Okay, so you're going to take all of this and put it into your function. So I'm going to have 8 times 2 plus k times 3 over n minus 2 plus k times 3 over n squared. Now, you can clean it up as much as you want, but your goal is obviously to match it to the multiple choice answer. Um, and then I need to plug this back into my definition. So I'm going to say this is the sum from n approaching infinity, or I'm sorry, the limit is n approaches infinity from k equals 1 to the sum of n of this thing here, 8 times 2 plus 3k over n minus 2 plus 3k over n squared, and it's all of that times, if you look back at that formula, your delta x, so times 3 over n. Okay, so again, go back, rewatch any video that you need to, but we need to be pretty darn aware of this. All right, the last one I just threw in here because this was so bad on our last test, I couldn't believe it. Okay, derivative of the inverse. How do you know something is a derivative of the inverse question? Well, first and foremost, you better recognize the definition. f of g of x equals x, which equals g of f of x. Okay, if they don't use the symbol for inverse, f inverse, you have to recognize this means the derivative of the inverse. This is the inverse formula. Okay, so what is the formula for derivative of the inverse? Well, it's 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. Okay, how do I remember that? I have a stupid little saying. I think of the number pi, spelled p-i, right? I do the prime first and then the inverse. 1 over f prime of f inverse of x, pi, prime first, then the inverse. Okay, so here's our question. Let f be the function given here. Let g of x equal f inverse. Dun, dun, dun. There it is. You're using the derivative of the inverse. What is the value of g prime of 3? How do I know it's the derivative of the inverse? Well, I want g prime. Clearly, they want a derivative. And the g is the inverse of f. So it's the derivative of the inverse formula. So 1 over pi f prime of f inverse of x. Okay, now f inverse is the same thing as g of x. There's the key, guys. You can't screw it up. f inverse is g of x. So if I want g prime of 3, I'm using 1 over f prime of f inverse of 3. Now again, use the key. 
F inverse of 3 is the same thing as G of 3. It's right there. So this is really 1 over F prime of, if it makes you feel better, G of 3. Because F inverse is G. So this is 1 over F prime, G of 3 is 1. Then you need to find F prime. So off to the side, F prime of X equals 3X squared plus 2X plus 1. I need to find F prime of 1, 3 plus 2 plus 1. I get a nice 6, so 1 over 6. And that does it for us. So our last big review, try to touch on a bunch of different topics. Um, obviously, we've got a week to go, and I'm looking forward to little improvements every day. Signing out for the last time, Mrs. Hill.